Hey everybody, welcome back to After the Sermon. My name is Justin. And I'm Daniel. How's it and, going? And uh, yeah, you replaced Carrie today. Yeah. She's Every not once feeling... In a while, she's every not... once in a while you gotta have a sub. That's you know, right, that's, that's right. That, I'm you a super are the sub. sub. Hey, the sixth man sixth of the man. year. Let's go. Put me in, coach. <laughs> I want to try. Yeah, yeah. So hey, I, I've continued our series on the Gospel of John, and this week... I I bit off a lot. I looked (laughs) at all of John chapter 14, but I really zoomed in on the phrase that Jesus says, and we're probably all familiar with that phrase. And it's when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then I zoomed in even closer to that word, the way, or that the two words, the way. And I asked, what did Jesus mean whenever he said, I am the way? We talked about that he is the way and the way is through the cross. We talked about that he is the way that we see what God is like. And we talked about that he is the way for us to experience life and more life. Mm. And so, yeah, so that's where we were. It it was, I think, a lot. Um, But I think it's really important for us to wrestle with what does it mean for Jesus to be the way that we are following, the Mm -hmm. example that we're following. So you had a question about one of those three points that I, I, I talked about. What was your question? Well, the thing that stuck out to me was the idea of the cross. And so my question for you is, and us to just have a discussion on, what does it look like for an everyday person to, to live some parts of the way of the cross? Yeah. Um, some of the bad news that I hear when I think about the cross is, is that I have to give up everything and I have to become a monk yeah. In the Himalayas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I've got to, yeah, like I can't have nice things. I can't have a car. I can't have, Things you know? have to get really extreme. Yeah. And I think there's some, because there's some imagery, maybe it's some weird Dan Brown. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what are those books that Dan Brown wrote Oh, uh, those. You know, those yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yep. Name somebody dropping. Say it in, somebody say it in the comments. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what is it? What is, how does it work for an everyday person? Yeah. I appreciate you naming that bad news for you. I think the bad news for me sometimes is that I don't know I, that what how is this relevant to us in 2023? Oh, okay. So in the first century, the way of the cross was that most likely, well, we know that most of the disciples, the followers of Jesus ended up being martyrs. And so they actually ended up ah. experiencing their own cross experience. I didn't think about they, that. They were actually crucified on the cross because they refused to say that Caesar was Lord and they continued to preach the gospel of Jesus. So it's like so much more literal. They it, might have heard it so much more literally. And then we yes. know from history it was literal for them. It they were was. like, well, I'm going I'm headed somewhere. Yes. Yes. And so for me some of the bad news is that does this have any relevance to my life today? Now what I do believe is that the written word of God is relevant to us today. Mm-hmm. It's as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago, that it's full of the spirit of God. It breathes into our life. So we have to do the hard work of trying to figure out how does this make sense for us in 2023. And we know contextualizing is okay. Yes. Because we see that in the letters written to other yes. to other churches and other cities that That's were not right. just in Jerusalem. That's right. That's right. right. Yes, that's right. So that's what we want to do with the the way of Jesus is to contextualize it. So most of us are probably not going to be monks. That's not to say that you can't. Right. But you might be called to be a nun or a monk. Or something. That's right. Yeah. Most of us won't. Most of us are the you know everyday Jims and Janes that live on a cul-de-sac somewhere, and we're living in America, and we've got a job, and we've got kids, and we we're chasing a career, yeah. and that's our life. And so what does it mean? Or you're mean? just out of college and you're, you're trying to figure out relationships or not relationships. And That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I have to pay my insurance now. Yes. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and what does it look like to live the cruciform way of Jesus? So where I think I would, I would land is Philippians chapter 2. And I think that Philippians chapter 2, Paul is fleshing out the cruciform way of Jesus. Mm. He's fleshing out what it means to take up my cross, to die to myself. So I I just want to read this. It says, you have to have the same attitude as Christ Jesus. Lean in, Paul, what's the attitude of Christ? And he gives us this beautiful poem. We're not sure if Paul wrote it himself or if somebody else had written it, but it became a song for the, the church, the early Christians. And he says this, though he, Jesus, was God, 
he did not consider equality with God something to cling to. So he, he, didn't, he didn't walk around saying, I'm God, look at me. And so then it says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a servant and, he, and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God, and he died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor, and he gave him the name that is above all other names, that every name, that, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of the Father. So Jesus was God. He didn't walk around saying, look at me, look at me, look at me. Instead, he took the position of a servant. He, he had a servant heart. Before this, Paul really starts to describe this for us and says, um, if you have any, any encouragement from belonging to Christ, then don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be oh, humble. That's good. Thinking of others as better than yourselves or considering others way, like considering other people's, um, what they want before I consider what I want. Mm -hmm. Right. And so don't look out to your own interest, but to the interest of others. And I think Paul is, for this church in Philippi, is helping them to understand the cruciform way. Hmm. And I think that applies in our relationships, in our yes. friendships, yeah. in our relationships, in our families, with our kids, yeah. in our workplaces, with our bosses, with our colleagues, um, uh, in, in, the, in the places that we are living our lives. To stop for a moment and say, what if this isn't about me first? Hmm. But what if it is that I am to lay myself aside and consider the interest of others before myself? Hmm. So if you think about it, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus didn't have to die. Like Jesus could have been good without us. He could have, but he decided to die setting aside his own interests, setting aside his own safety, say, setting aside his own like self-preservation. And he laid down his life for us because he considered our interest, he considered us and our righteousness above his own. He put us before himself. This is the way of the cross. And I think that has a lot of relevance to our everyday life. Yeah. Well, there's a natural tendency in me to be selfish. I think yeah. that's the, hu I mean, it's a human curse is to like yeah. wake up in the morning and immediately think only about what would make me feel the way I want to feel. Yes. And I wonder if, if the antidote or the, the pushback to that selfish natural way of being is to start to ask the question of, what could I do for someone else first? Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. the, you talked about this some, the idea of even the language we use about being us instead of just me. Yes. Yeah. Because naming us as a church or as a family is to name that like, like I'm counting you yes. as so important yes. that I'm going to think about you. Yes. When I make decisions. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm wondering for you and I if we could give an example of a place in our life where we are where we've had the the opportunity to consider other somebody else's interests before our own. Um, do you see that? I mean, where's a place in your life where you see that on a regular basis? Um some of it is you know sometimes we, we, we take Alice and I will take couples through like pre-marriage. Yeah. And we just um, went through a, a course with some people at our church. And one of the things was like to write down our top five priorities, mm -hmm. which always feels like a little bit like, well, you have to put the, you know, you got to put God, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, you know, the church, my yeah, wife, yeah, yeah. like you have, there's like five that if you don't put the right ones, yes. but if you can get beyond that, like, like where is a place that you would really name that you're struggling. So from the, the priorities are getting out of whack. Yeah. And it's, it, I'm trying to put my stuff ahead of it. So one of the things Alice and I were talking about is, um, like I love sports. 
in various times, I'm, it might be running or basketball or whatever league, tennis league, whatever yeah. is happening in my life, you know. And there are times when that's really good for me and times when I have struggled to, to name, this is good for me, but also is this good for my wife and my kids? Mm. Is the time that is this, that I'm desiring to yeah. put to it, which because I'm competitive, it can yeah, yeah. it can kind of build upon itself and kind yeah. of uh, avalanche. Yeah. And before you know it, I'm like, man, this would be great if I could do this as a part time job. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And then you, I have to ask the question of, is is this good for my family? Yeah. And I, I would say some of that is not to say that we should never do things that we enjoy. Right. Like if you're married or you have kids, that's not to say that you just stop doing all the things yeah, that you love yeah. to do. But it's bringing the things that you desire and the things you enjoy to do to the table of the family and say, how does this fit into our family as right. a whole? And another question is, how can we do this together? You know, so that 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 is mm. like, I remember whenever I got married, somebody told me, when you get married, you're going to realize just how selfish you are. Because all of a sudden, I'm not just putting things on my calendar yeah. that are about me, but I have to bring that to someone else and say, where does this fit into us, yeah. not just me? I, I think um, some place that I see it in my life in the past couple of weeks is I've had a couple moments where um, someone was trying to say something to me and I wasn't hearing it the way that they wanted me to hear it. Hmm. And what I wanted to do in those moments is I wanted to be heard more than to hear but I, my wife helped me do wow. this and my ministry coach helped me do this to slow down enough, enter into the conversation and ask, I think you're trying to say something to me and I'm having a hard time hearing it. Would you please say it again so that I can hear it? And so I wanted to go ahead and open my mouth and say, like, I wanted to be heard. I wanted to say all the things. Wow. I wanted to get my point across. But in those, and, and I got help from some people <laughs> right. to to die to myself, to pick up my cross, to shut my mouth and just ask, I think you're trying to say something to me here and I'm not hearing it. Can, can you help me? Can you say it again so that maybe I can hear it? Man. And, and in those two conversations, they were really, really good because I, I think I, I was allowing them to go first mm. in the conversation. And I did have an opportunity in those conversations to share some things that I wanted to share, but just by allowing them to go first, it opened up some opportunities in the relationships. So that's a great example. So, yeah. That's so that's a really good example. Well, I think that's enough. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, that's good. I think hopefully you can start to wrestle with what does it mean to live in the way of the cross on main street? Like in your everyday life, 2023, living in Concord, North Carolina, Cabarrus County, wherever you find yourself on a daily basis, the way of the cross is the way of Jesus. To live a cruciform way, to lay myself aside for the interests of others, this is the way of Jesus. We have to wrestle with what does that look like in our own context. Yeah. And maybe you can have some conversations with your spouse, your friend, your 242 groups, and, and wrestle with how can you be doing that? in the here and now. That's really good. All right. Thanks so much, friends, for hanging out with us. We'll do this again next week. See you. Bye.